Hi folks, today I'll be taking a look at Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom for TI-99 4A, an ambitious port of a really cool arcade game that I think does achieve something pretty neat on the TI-99 as well. Even if it wasn't really the arcade version, despite anything we might have been told in that regard. This is a game that's pretty near and dear to my heart for a couple different reasons. I've said before that Sega's contributions to the TI-99 library are particularly memorable ones for me, with Congo Bongo's isometric platforming, Star Trek's multiple perspectives on real-time space battles, and Buck Rogers' into-the-screen shooter action, all having looked to me like really impressive demos of the gameplay possibilities on the TI-99. So it's on the one hand part of that small but really remarkable Sega contribution to the TI-99, but on the other hand it's part of a larger legacy of 80s Sega arcade shooters that I happen to really love. You see, I happen to be a pretty big fan of Space Harrier and its many ports and spin-offs. Like with Buck Rogers' various ports, some of them live up to the original, while others do have a harder time keeping up with expectations. But making it work on limited hardware can look even cooler to me than putting impressive graphics on equally impressive hardware. So I love them all, or most of them, anyway. From PC Engine Space Harrier to... Space Harrier 3D. And with Buck Rogers being an important predecessor to that later generation, I love the fact that I've got it on my TI-99. And I love the fact that it's trying to do the same things later Space Harrier ports did. It's trying to portray perspective, depth, and object scaling, usually on hardware with support for none of those things. And the effect is often pretty cool, and particular to the hardware. Because this is one of those games that just got ported to kind of everything. Which is definitely my favorite platform of the 80s when it comes to game ports. Just kind of everything. But to know how well it does in those ports, and in its TI-99 port, we'll need to take a look at the original Buck Rogers. And the original here is actually the Japanese arcade title Zoom 909. It's almost identical to the Western Buck Rogers release, outside of the title screen, and it has in common with Buck Rogers that it doesn't really have anything to do with Buck Rogers. This is a game that's definitely more Planet Zoom than it is Buck Rogers. But that's fine, because the zooming is what we're here for, and the zoom is definitely something it delivers. So while it might claim in the Western Arcade releases advertising that Buck Rogers is confronted by a wicked warrior world, where he's out to destroy the source ship and liberate the planet Zoom, we know what's up. Zooming needs no justification. Never did. The arcade game is structured around an eight-sector sequence, which, once completed, repeats in more difficult variations. Each sector is at least somewhat distinct from the others, but you can subdivide them into a few types. Uh, sector 1 and 5, in which you fly down a corridor. Sector 2 and 6, in which you fly in space. 3 and 7, in which you fly on the planet's surface. And then 4, in which you're flying through an enclosed space. Which reminds me of certain notorious space harrier levels, incidentally. Then finally, there's Sector 8, in which you face off against the Source ship. So what we get out of these sectors in the TI-99 version, and in most home versions, is naturally just a sampling. But let's be honest, there's no way to make a TI-99 do this. So I feel like what we get is pretty reasonable in the end. The TI-99 version begins on the planet's surface that we see in Sector 3 and 7, and our first goal is to pass through enough electron gates to progress. This is one of two ways to progress in Sectors 3 and 7 from the arcade game, but it's not the only one. You can also score by killing enemies at this point in the arcade game, and there aren't any yet here in the TI-99 version. But we do get some enemies when the hoppers appear later on. Those are actually from stages 1 and 5 in the arcade game, but here they attack us on the planet's surface instead. And they're announced with some great voice synth, too. 
which I do want to give the game credit for. The arcade original doesn't have any voice synth or samples, so you could certainly excuse the game just skipping it. But we get that extra TI-99 touch here with the addition of voice, which is nice. The next phase of gameplay in the TI-99 version is in space, where we get attacked by saucers that look like the ones from Round 1 Sector 2 from the arcade version. But the missiles, which are your main threat there, are conspicuously missing, so while it looks kind of nice, there really isn't any challenge or danger here at all, like there is in the arcade version. The saucers are just lining up to be slaughtered, kind of. Poor saucers. When we've beaten them, we face off against the mothership, or the source ship, as the arcade version calls it. Just like the one we face off in Arcade Sector 8. But as with the saucers, attackers are absent here, whereas attacking ships are present in the arcade version. The ship's just waiting there for you to shoot it here. Poor helpless thing. Kind of feeling for the aliens at this point. As you begin the next round, time pressure increases, and it increases by a lot. And this is one thing about the port that really doesn't match up with the arcade original for me. In the arcade original, enemies and objects are the threat, and the timer is just a bonus counter. If it ever runs out, you just move on to the next stage. Here, on the other hand, it's a fuel gauge. When it runs out, you die, and you restart the level. And time pressure increases with each level by, as I say, a fair amount, so... I guess I see what they were doing here. In the arcade version, each round is more difficult because a new, more difficult spin on the design is implemented. And here, I can't blame them for giving up on the possibility of designing dozens of distinct sectors with new challenge factors. We were probably only ever going to have the two or three or whatever it is, so... You need to quantify difficulty somehow, and time is a reasonable way to do it across the game. So I get it, but at the same time, not quite arcade. And I'll say one thing for it. The fuel timer's role in the TI-99 version works well with the game's speed mechanics. Like in the arcade version, the game lets you accelerate to unreasonably high speeds, or slow down to a crawl if you prefer. And with time pressure, this encourages you to play faster and more dangerously as the game progresses, and that sense of danger is satisfying. So that makes sense here and works well. Here, because the mechanics are simpler, the whole game just speeds up as you speed up. The hoppers hop faster, you move and shoot faster, everything. Your speed isn't relative to your enemies like in the arcade version, where slowing down will see enemies pass you, but speeding up will see you pass them. But within the context of the TI-99 game, I think the speed mechanics and their role in tandem with the timer work. On the other hand, the control mechanic is pretty much the same. The arcade game doesn't have a throttle, you just have a digital fast and slow button respectively. So it controls exactly the same here. This isn't one of those cases where a throttle or a wheel needs to be translated problematically to digital controls. It's already digital in that respect. Another thing to be said for the TI-99 version, and for the other home versions for that matter, is that as far as challenge goes, there are no infinite continues, and this is an issue with the arcade version. You can just pop in quarters till the end of time, indefinitely. So high scores are basically meaningless, unless they're explicitly a one-credit score. And the game doesn't track that, so... Whereas high scores here actually mean something in the TI-99 version, and the other home versions. So, I'll give it credit for not giving us infinite credits, like the arcade version does. So, the TI-99 version isn't very much like the arcade original. It does nail the generalities, it gets us as close as we could ever expect to sprite scaling, and more importantly, it conveys a very good sense of speed, and controls are pretty close to the original. But it certainly doesn't give us the original rounds and sectors from the arcade version. Which raises the question, did any of the other ports manage something more arcade accurate? It was ported to just about everything after all. Surely somebody took a shot at all the main sector types. And yes, somebody did. 
The ColecoVision port much more closely resembles the arcade version. It divides the game into rounds and sectors like the arcade version, though it calls them sections for some reason, which just sounds less cool to me, less spacey. And the six sections fairly closely resemble the arcade version sector types. The reduction to six sectors makes perfect sense, since three of them are variations on a previous sector. It also includes enemy missiles in sectors where that should be a threat. But while it's visually impressive and more arcade accurate than its peers, I'm not entirely sold on the gameplay. First off, it has no speed control at all. But more than that, it feels like it's on cruise control at a pretty leisurely pace. An enemy scaling is extremely limited, so there's little sense of enemy distance. On the whole, I think it makes for a cooler looking demo, but a less satisfying gameplay experience than the versions which tried to just get the gameplay mechanics right and prioritize that over a more comprehensive representation of the arcade version's visuals. So the TI-99 version does a pretty good job of delivering what it promises. Which is to say, a sense of speed, fast flying that feels increasingly dangerous as the game goes on, and the basic arcade control design. It's not a game that you can play endlessly, given it only has three phases of gameplay, and only one of them is really challenging. But as a Space Harrier fan, I'm glad to have Buck Rogers on my TI-99, and I'm glad it succeeded in doing what it set out to do. Thanks for watching, folks. If you'd like to see more of my TI-99 reviews as I produce them, hit subscribe below. I'll leave you with some uninterrupted Buck Rogers gameplay to close things out. Watch the hunters. Alien guards approaching. Avoid electron from sparks. Watch the hunters.
alien guards,